Hi everybody, welcome to another career tutorial. I'm Crate Man. What we're going to do this time through is we're going to look at forces. Now, uh, I have uh, all our forces loaded up in the scene. I have uh, directional force, I have point force, I have dampening force, torque, and uh, flow. Okay? Now, before I get started, there's one important thing I, I, uh, I forgot to tell you about in the uh, setup of your of your um, particle emitter. Uh, that is to use forces of the scene only in free mode. And uh, like my first one is has directional force. Uh, I on each one of these particle emitters, I put only, and then I use the force that that is going to affect them. So each one of our particle emitters has uh, different forces, and uh, the default value is the balls, but um, I went ahead and I, I made cubes out of the torque force because it has its own special thing that it does. Okay, uh, now let's go ahead and get started. Um, each one of our particle emitters is affected by a force. See that? And they are all doing the things that the forces ha are telling them to do. Let's go ahead and take a look at our directional force. This is our easiest force actually. Uh, oh, duh. Um, let's go. Let's click this guy. Come on, baby. What's up? Our directional force. Uh, each one of our forces has to be affected by what's in the effects tab. Now, uh, the strength of the force that is being applied to our particle emitter is three feet a second divided by two square. I'm not, I don't really know what that upward thing is, but I do know that uh, it's dividing the the uh, amount of feet a second uh, and, and affecting our particle emitter. See what happens? This is at three feet a second, okay? We're going to go ahead and crank it a little bit, and it's the red one. Yeah, it's so cluttered. It's kind of hard to tell. Let's go ahead and see if we can focus it the other way. There we go. And that's three feet a second. Now, if you want to crank that up, you can go to ten feet a second. And see how it's jumped uh, to reflect the amount that it's uh, gone. But check this out. If we if we click in the middle of our animation, it's going to do a little updating. And you see where it says 10 feet a second? Let's bring that back to 3. Or let's bring it back to 3 instead of 30. And let's crank it to the end. And you notice how it's come back? But check this out. Let's bring it to the beginning. And about somewhere in the middle, the uh, particles start going backwards to reflect the amount of uh, force that is put on uh, the particle emitter, right? Now, now what's cool about this is uh, each one of these can be affected that way. Each one of these can be animated over time. Nope. Each one of these can be animated over time, right? Crank this around. see how it backs up and they can all do that all right and that's kind of the magic of the of the forces now it's really weird to me I, they seem kind of incomplete as far as elements of Carrera uh, it seems like there'd be some sliders or something that you that would help you affect it maybe a preview or something but yeah it looks like they just kind of said all right well let's throw them in there uh, this is your point force now we did a little uh, we did a little uh, tutorial on point forces already, so I'm not going to go too much into detail. But the point forces basically, it's a uh, it's a gravity well. Basically, uh, your force your particles get thrown out and then go back around and around and around until they meet in the middle, kind of like a black hole, and that can be affected over time too. Now, one thing about all our forces, our our room is 50 by 50. I went ahead and I tra traded it up. It's 50 by 50. And uh, 
it's going to point force and uh, your strength is you know I, I put 5,000 it comes in at like 800,000 and that's really quite a bit it makes everything look messy and excuse me moves the particles too fast and I put a field dec decay rate at 25 feet let's put it at uh, 10 feet back to the beginning and it kind of tightens up a little bit see that and that's that's a great special effect for you know magic or uh, you know superpowers whatever that would be a very good one for that one but you just you just got to kind of uh, realize where you're at um, your dampening force, that's pretty, that's pretty easy. Uh, the less strength that you have on it, the more, well, let's go ahead and do uh, a strength of uh, one kilogram. And you notice how when I did that, uh, the force starts affecting it a little more. Uh, the deal with this, and the deal with all our forces, is they deal with the physics part and the they dis, deal with physics and gravity and then they add their own little math into the into the equation so our um, our dampening force emitter uh, I put the mass at 50 at point 50 and then that's point 50 kilograms uh, that's kind of the universal weight measurements is kilograms uh, and I put our dampening force at one, so it is it's starting to dampen uh, the blue balls before uh, before uh, uh, before it reaches an apex, its natural apex. The dampening force puts it puts it there. Now torque force. Now this is a very or yeah torque force. I made the I made these little cubes here because torque force spins your objects, and I put our our spinning strength at 720 degrees. So, in the five second animation that I have, uh, in 720 degrees, it's going to spin these it's going to spin these things 720 degrees throughout the course of the animation. You can kind of see them spinning a little bit there. But it spins it on the uh, on the uh, 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 z axis, and uh, and spins them. You know, depending on how many how much you put in your torque force. And we're going to move on to the coolest one because I think this one's probably going to be everybody's favorite. Uh, the flow force. The flow force is very cool. Now I have the x. Uh, value set at 40. Got a rotate strength there and turn density. I think I probably should have put put the squares there so we could kind of check that out too. But uh, I didn't, so let's go ahead and uh, check this out. Now I put this on the x-axis. I put the uh, strength on the x-axis. That's the x-axis for the for the particle emitter. Uh, you see that now if I was to uh, put five there see how it kind of breaks up a little bit it starts going down to the bottom let's go ahead and make our Z go uh, oh I don't know 50 and you remember we turned everything off as far as gravity and that kind of thing. And see how it kind of breaks up a little bit? Now check this out. Let's lose that. Start fresh. And let's go to flow force. And then crank to the middle here. Let's do this minus 40 because it can handle minus values in here and minus 50 <coughs> excuse
excuse me and then we'll go back to 40 and 50 over here see how it went down over here let's go back to 40 here and 50 here and see if we can keep it from hitting the ground I don't think that's going to happen but you notice how it breaks up and then comes down no it's going to hit the ground but the forces affect it over time and look at how it whips itself back the the column whips itself back into uh, where it was initially and that's kind of messy but that's the uh, that's the math on it so uh, anyway that's your uh, that's your forces it, uh, your forces are pretty cool I think I pretty much hit them all yeah uh, your forces are pretty cool uh, play around with them you're gonna need to do that uh, try and do the uh, the little particle emitter trick and then and then play with the forces and check them out uh, they're really cool and what's and before I finish this off something about forces your forces can affect your trees and your forces can affect every object in your scene you just have to uh, uh, yeah you, you just have to uh, mess with your physics and you know, if you want, if you want your your scenes to be hyper real and whatever, you're gonna have to mess with the gravity and that kind of stuff. So, anyway, uh, yeah. So that's your uh, that's your forces. That's it for this time. I'm Crite Man, and I'll talk to you again later.